what's going on everybody welcome back to the torian and Rain reloaded channel if you haven't done so already make sure you go ahead and hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new click the bell to be notified whenever i upload a new video or go live as you can see we are back <laughs> me and rob are back with another collab video i think the last time we did a collab was actually a form in the form of a live stream yeah which we would you know we were talking about a certain individual and shout out to everybody who actually watched that i got a lot of good feedback from that particular yeah that live stream, stream was lit yeah so we are back today as y'all can see by the thumbnail we getting back to the basics <laughs> i swear this is this is like like i said it's becoming routine and i think i told y'all before <laughs> that we could literally probably do at least one stream a month just talking about just picking one thing to talk about when it comes to this individual who has in my opinion earned bed buck and infinity status like i don't need to add any more numbers to the parts i said once you get the part four and if there's a part five you are now officially at infinity status yeah and that's where and that's pretty much where this guy is at right here yeah he definitely don't need a number he needs one of those formulas like have you ever seen like those math formulas where it's like one plus ten to the x equals limit of infinity <laughs> like that's he needs to just have a math formula by his by his count number because th it's beyond a number and it'll just constantly be a repeated thing so yeah that's actually why i'm titling this video to infinity and beyond because i <laughs> i couldn't find a proper title to name this <laughs> but i mean once you actually see what he's about to discuss then you'll pretty much get the gist of it and it's not shocking coming from him considering right. the profession he used to be in and his stance on that and how he's never going to fold under that but i said let me go ahead and send rob this and see what we can break down as it pertains to this That's so hilarious. rob we gonna you call said them you scuzz. we're gonna call him scuzz light year <laughs> <laughs> so rob you said you haven't seen this video no i haven't looked at it. this is gonna be fresh I mean, for me it's gonna be fresh for me like i didn't see it either this was actually this video was actually sent to me by one of my subscribers and they wanted me and you to react to this that's why i sent it oh so nice. this is so this isn't me just going to look for a video of his because i don't go searching for nothing of his anyway but this was something that was sent to me by one of my subscribers i think about two weeks ago but you know we weren't able to get to it at that time because you know we have our own lives to deal with outside of youtube and right. even on here separate right. from doing these collabs right. so shout out to that particular subscriber they know exactly who they are so this like i said is my first time watching it rob you said this is going to be your first time watching it so what are we talking about well, what is he talking about today well yeah, the name of the, nothing <laughs> yeah definitely but the name of the video is called black parents brainwash kids to hate police officers <laughs> now you know all the other videos that this man has done that we have reacted to were under a certain time limit but you right. know when it comes to talking about you know the police he gonna stretch that video narrative out so you see this video is 21 minutes and 32 seconds long minus his uh his shameless plug for his products because you know he gonna do that and we're gonna skip right past that right we don't care about that no before we even get into it rob what do you think we're gonna hear <laughs> i'm laughing already oh man we're just gonna hear anything that you could think of that will come from like a right-wing channel or right-wing think tank that's negative and not true about the reasons why black people have issues with police is everything that officer tatum is going to capitalize on he's going to say that black people have an antagonistic relationship with the police black people don't conduct themselves a uh, quote unquote certain way when police are around it's going to be the same thing that we that we hear all the time the, 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 they're teaching the kids to not be responsible because black people blame it on the police when they get killed instead of blaming ourselves you know just you know it, it just the same nonsense probably everything that his wife wrote down for him <laughs> yeah his producer yeah and the reason why for those in the chat who are listening right now the reason why i asked rob that question is because we know how predictable this guy is we yeah. pretty much know what kind of talking points he's going to bring when it comes to this so i just want to see if rob is going to be on point with this but most likely he is and he's probably going to throw in some stuff about how he is when he deals with the police because he loves to throw that around yep. like he's the magical negro i know that's probably going to pop up in there somewhere but again this is 21 minutes and 32 seconds those of you who know me and rob do these collabs know that these things are no less than 30 minutes long. 
Yeah, so y'all yeah. better pop a squat because this one's 21 minutes and 32 seconds. So we're going to probably be here for over an hour. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, let's get into it. Great police officers out there. There's also some police officers who are not so good. And my fear is that you run across one of those bad ones. Maybe because of my skin color. I remember being put in handcuffs for something that had nothing to do with me. I was literally walking in the mall. What's wrong, baby? I see it uh, weighing on you, and I don't want it to weigh on you. I'm just worried about Donovan. I don't want him to be shot. I don't want him to go to jail. Why would you teach your kids this? Oh, this. Why would he, why would he think that a video cool. that was m- made by the his cut, eyes? Or they, yeah, look at them eyes. They're bucking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gonna get plenty of those. <laughs> you already know. That's all it is. Well, why, like, go I, ahead. Why would he think that a video made by the cut is equivalent to total reality? Like, you know, can you inform the people what the cut is? It's a it's it's a cringe channel on YouTube like Jubilee. I was getting ready to say, is it like Jubilee? (laughs) And that channel is so cringe. My God, it it just it 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 really it really is. I'll tell you what, though, the cut and Jubilee for content creators, like say, for instance, you're a content creator and you have no idea what you want to do. You could literally start your content creation off of just binge watching the cut and reacting to videos on the cut. Yeah, because I'm looking at that clip and I'm like, what is this? This looks like very Tubi level acting yeah. right here. You said Tubi level Tubi acting. Tubi is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna be honest with you. If these were P- if this was uh if this was a PC narrative where they talk about how much they love the cops, I would say this is very uh Ben Shapiro-esque type yeah. acting right here. straight up propaganda but yeah th- yeah this is uh sounds like something off of Tubi. i almost paused it before it cut to whatever he was getting ready to say to say rob what is this that's a and then that's when the you cut. said what the and yeah that's why i had to ask what the cut was because i didn't even know what it was but then i was saying in my mind when you started to define it i was like i bet you this is something like jubilee and yep. sure enough that's what you <laughs> said i was like oh god another level of cringe that i'll just avoid you know Right. I stay far away from Jubilee, and I'm going to stay far away from that. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, let's get into what he about to say. So go to the website, get you one of these shirts. Link is in the description. Now, that shirt. Look, do you see what that shirt says? I didn't even pay attention to that. You see what that shirt shows? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's Donald Trump with a Jake Paul filter. <laughs> got the 45 channel <laughs> yeah now the thing that's interesting right is that so like like this is this is how much of a clown officer tatum is like that shirt is so cool with donald trump looking like that on it right but like if there's a black dude that literally is which where that look came from that very mm-hmm. look right there is a stolen look from how black dudes look mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you remember those then it old- would be thuggish do you remember those old shirts like back in the day, like maybe back in like the I would say like the early 2000s, back at the time when, you know, us well at the time, us boys, you know, as teenagers would wear the tall T, like the long T. Yeah. And it had like the different Looney Tune characters on there, and they were dressed like they was in rap videos. You remember oh, yeah, those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember those. that right there came back to my mind when I saw this. Yeah. Yep. Description section. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications anytime I go live. Make a video. Make sure you still subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Comment on the video. Share this video. Let's get into this, ladies and gentlemen. I- Damn, nigga, breathe. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just had to throw that in it because it's like he said all that in one breath. Now, yeah, granted, all in one we did. Breath. Now, granted, we did speed the uh, the audio up a little bit for you know copyright purposes, just in case. But we haven't had no problems before, so hopefully we don't have no issues now. But damn, I can imagine what he's talking about talking at a normal speed. Right. I, I normally am remiss or repulsed by things so much so that I don't make videos about them because they're so they're, they're so um I guess they make me feel some type of way. And, and, and I don't always want to talk bad about black people. I- That's a lie. The last couple of reactions we did of you, which were fairly recent within a month or two time span, was of you talking bad about black people. And one of them lost their lives after being brutally beaten to death by black cops. Tyree Nichols, ring a bell? Right. And the thing he is- lying that, already. And we only a minute 49 in. Right. And he does want to talk about black people because that's what gets him his paycheck. That's exactly. what he, has, he has to do that. He doesn't have a choice. 
Right. I don't always want to be that guy because people complain. Brandon, you always talk about black people. You always who to on his who on his channel complains about him talking about black people? Exactly. You look through his comment section; they'd be proud for him to talk about black yeah. people. Yeah, where is the complaints at? <laughs> how did he get his How did he get his subscribers? Like that's that's his base, right? What he should do is everybody that's went to him on his channel, and I'm talking about his subscribers, your subscribers. Show us where your subscribers have complained about you talking about black people. His subscribers actually get in and start using the racial epithets and all that. And he cheers them mm -hmm. on. Nobody, nobody on his channel, nobody around his way is complaining about him talking about black people. That's a, that's a flat out lie. <laughs> and then, and then on top of that, you know, the only time that they really go against him is if he really goes off the rails about a certain topic, like with Tyree Nichols or Ahmaud Arbery or something along those lines. And then, you know, his subscribers, the few, will actually check him on what he said. But he don't be paying. He don't care about that because he'll mm -hmm. double down and find something else to talk about involving black people and then have them being back on his gravy train again. Yeah. I mean, he, and then not even about black people. Like this dude is just a bad content creator and he's an idiot. Like, because you know how you know how we do on my channel. We quote unquote, we always play the game. So if we play the game and take race out of it, he got checked about Uvalde because he's an idiot. Yeah. And that's one yep. of the beautiful things about playing the game because you can play their game and still debunk their idiotic talking points. Right. Trying to slow down. But then I see videos like this. Look at the title of this video. Black parents explaining how to deal with police. I, I have never been so disappointed and angered at the same time out of any video I've ever seen. I doubt that. I was about to say, just the smell of collard greens turns him into a rabies ravaged animal. I bet he gets so angry. <laughs> I bet most of the stuff he eats is unseasoned. And oh. he probably think, and he probably think it's the best thing since sliced bread. I bet you like anything that has to do with like you know black people that's associated with foundational black Americans. He acts like a full on male Karen if asked about it. Like if somebody asked him like, "Do you like sweet potato pie?" I bet you his eyes start bucking, he starts screaming, his voice get all high, he'd be ready to fight you just because you asked if if you like some sweet potato pie. I wonder. I wonder what's the last cookout he's ever been invited to. Ugh, probably I'm, one. I'm that. I'm curious. Like, what's the last cookout he's ever? been invited to by a black person or by a black family yeah i was about to say the cookouts that he goes to they don't have lighter fluid you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to play this video and i'm going to let you hear how these individuals are claiming that they are informing their children about police and i and i want i want you i don't care what color you are i don't care what background you're a police officer not a police officer you know one you don't know one I want you to think to yourself and write the comments as you hear it. Does this make any sense to say to a kid, to perform in front of a kid, and to leave a kid feeling this way about law enforcement? Write in the comment section. It's hard for me to even make this video because it, it makes me so upset. And it's not that hard for you to do. What we're doing right now, that's hard. To have to listen to two levels of cringe. The cringe from what you're reacting to and the cringe that's reacting to it. Right. That's hard. And that shirt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that shirt. Wait a minute. Did he? I wonder if he got that cut. No, I'm about to say did he get that custom made, but he didn't. But I just realized you see the T right there under the you know the symbol? Yeah. At, at first I thought maybe that's the T for his name, but I was like, nah, it's for Trump. No, if that if that uh if Trump's tattoos were actually a swastika and two SS lightning bolts and maybe a black sun, the shirt would be more believable. And I honestly think that Officer Tatum would pay more money for those symbols on there. I noticed that when we were skipping through his uh, through his intro, because that's where he advertises all of his merch, he started pulling on his shirt. So I wonder if that is one, the, one of the things on his site. It probably is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that T on the side, I don't think that's Trump. I think that's for Tatum. I think that's actually like his logo for his merch. Yeah. And just the irony is that Trump, you know, last name begins with a T. Right. If I was Trump, I would sue him for using his likeness. <laughs> Ooh, that would now that now that would be quite the moment right there. That right. would be a that would be a world is correct moment. That would be a, that's and that's a move that, that that they like to pull on their coons. You know, what I'm it's just like when Trump basically was like going at Candace Owens about you know that the jab. You know what I'm saying? He'd be like, "My African American, take that shirt off." You know, <laughs> you know Trump said, right. "My African Americans." Yeah, just like just pearly things. <laughs> <laughs>
and, and, and I, another thing before I start, I hate that it have to be black people doing this. I don't understand why we doing this. This don't make no sense whatsoever. All right, roll the clip. A line that we do at our house, we practice this thing. What is it? I'm Ariel Sky Williams. I'm eight years old. I'm unarmed and I have nothing that will hurt you. That's just kind of a thing we practice at our house. Really, bro? In, w in what position would an eight-year-old have to say, I'm, tell full name, I'm unarmed, I have nothing to harm you? I and, don't know. And, maybe that situation in Rochester, New York, where the police yoked up the eight-year-old girl and threw her in the car because it was like an eight-year-old girl that that happened to, an eight-year-old black girl, Officer Tatum, maybe like that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, as cringe as this is, his reaction is what we're really paying attention to because what you just of what you just pointed out. Or we can take it with Tamir Rice. Even though Tamir Rice was 12, I still boggles my mind that they tried to say he was 18. But they literally pulled up and did a drive-by on him. Yeah. Off of a lie. They didn't yeah. give him enough time to respond or put his hands up. As soon as they came up there, like I, that footage plays in my mind. And I know that resonates with you because that happened in your state. Yeah. Yeah, that absolutely. Happened. Then that was in Cleveland, right? It was in Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, when I look at that footage, they literally pulled up. Like, if they drove just a little bit closer, they would have ran that boy over. And he was in the park with his sister. So imagine being being imagine being traumatized that not only did you, you know, you lost your brother that day, but they also like held her down on the ground as if she was a problem as well. Right. Like yeah, a they, parent could have lost two kids that day. It's right. unfortunate she lost one. Right. Yeah, they don't care, bro. A scenario. Name a scenario where this has happened in United States history. I literally just named one. Right. <laughs> and for people and for people that, you know, if they want to go and do their research, I mean, Google is your friend. And he could have easily did that. And I'm sure there are plenty of others where right. that has occurred. And as far as I'm concerned, the police and white people are the equivalent because white people by the powers of the government and by you know the code of white supremacy are allowed to deputize themselves and act like police officers so mm -hmm. there was that one time you i think you actually did a video about it you remember that individual who uh assaulted and graped the eight-year-old girl who was in kentucky in her grandmother's backyard and then the guy didn't end up getting any jail time because they said that he was uh mentally incompetent you remember yeah. that mm -hmm. yeah so, so there's multiple stories about this where uh, black people, black children are harmed and targeted by white people, a.k.a. the police. You know what I'm saying? That a young girl doing nothing, just standing there, has to put her hands up in the air and say, I'm Ariel, I'm nine years old, eight years old, whatever she said, and I'm unarmed. Never in the history of America would a kid actually have to do that. So now check this out, though. Right here, right, there should be a block right under this video for disinformation because he said never in the history of america never in the history of america so this is misinformation that he's saying because we just talked about that case in rochester new york where the i think it was an eight or nine year old girl got maced pepper sprayed you know what i'm saying thrown in the police car so where's the, where's the youtube's editing to show the correction on the misinformation and not only that where he tripped himself up at is not only with what you just said he said never in the history of america mm -hmm. that means we can go back to the early 2000s 90s 80s 70s 60s we're in jim crow yeah 50s 40s we can go back to slavery 30s reconstruction yeah 1800s Remember, I'm doing a whole Black Massacre series on my channel right now. Yep. So you can't sit up here and say that never in the history has that happened. Does George Stinney ring a bell? The youngest person ever to be executed in the electric chair? Black boy, 14 years old? I don't like how the parents are teaching the kids to deal with that either. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the fact that they're teaching the kids to just, oh, put your hands up and just do what you're I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Then again, you said that this was a cringe channel. This is a cringe channel. Yeah. Like I said, we are we are cringing at the video itself. Not like I said, we're cringing two times. One at the video that uh Fakem is reacting to and his reaction. Right. So, like I said, we are struggling over here. We're yeah. only three minutes and 57 seconds into a 21 minute video. So I can only imagine what else we are about to hear. Right.
Now, don't say Tamir Rice because Tamir Rice was twiddling a gun that looked like it was real. He literally. Then we just mentioned, I just mentioned Tamir Rice. Right. And look at what he just. Nah, nah. You ain't allowed to mention this person, that person, that person, this person. Nah. Like what? He said, don't mention Tamir Rice because he was twiddling with the gun and everything like that. And by the way, it wasn't even a real gun. It was an airsoft. Yeah, and the police are supposed to be trained. I mean, if something looks like what if somebody looks like they're guilty and they're not, I mean, is it okay to go ahead and shoot them? Like, that's a fatal error that he's talking about. And I guess it should just be allowed. Let's keep this in mind. This guy used to be a cop. So when he says certain things on the behalf of the police, that's nine times out of 10 what he probably would have done if he had the opportunity to do so. Yeah. And if no police come out and ever correct anything that he's saying, we should just assume that he's actually speaking for the police. <laughs> right. The front orange tip was painted black and he was pointing it at people. He pulled it out at the cop like this and ended up getting shot once, which was very unfortunate. You don't even feel that. No, no, I can almost imagine how, like, how righteous he felt the police were in that moment. Oh man, he he's so goofy, bro. This is like the most goofy dude in the world. You should have seen how giddy and goofy he was when when that happened. I don't think I want to see it. No, you don't. You'd vomit. Come on, it there get worse. Great police officers. Are you right? It does get worse. Both of you get worse. <laughs> he mm, thinks that mm, it gets mm. better for him. <laughs> <laughs> There's also some police officers who are not so good. And my fear is that you run across one of those bad ones. For some reason, people of color have always been a target by the police. Before they became a policeman? I don't like you say people of color. No, I don't like that either. And, and, and he's like a whole black dad and his daughter's black. Like, I didn't like that he said people of color. You know that anyone over here knows that i do not like that term especially when it comes out the mouth of a black person yeah now if no you want to say black people to be saying that now if you want to now if you want to use that term you have to reference any other group that's considered non-white but when you're talking about black people don't say that poc like that's another moment right there that that is cringe worthy for me well, as far as I'm concerned, too, like the other like there, there's no such thing as people of color. All of those other groups are other white people or other people that would be defined as Caucasian, possibly except for like some groups of Asians. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like not like the rest of those people are indeed white people. You know what I'm saying? Like so, like because uh, say, for instance, somebody came from Spain. Yeah, Th they can be considered Latino and then somehow they'd be considered a person of color like Cameron Diaz can be considered a person of color. Like, are yeah. you serious? Mm -hmm. So you're a blonde, blue eyed white woman who's also a person of color. I mean, because of you, her last name. Yeah. So you just get it all. You, you know what I'm saying? And that's the whole point. The whole or just, point. Or, or Charlie but, Sheen. Right. And like the whole point of that is to standardize everybody to make it look as if everybody has some kind of level of oppression to try to downplay the black, you know, American descendant of slave foundational black American experience here in the United States. You know what I'm saying? Because we're the only group of people that never that haven't gotten any kind of restitution for any crimes against us. Right. They were person. And that person took all their ideas and all their thoughts and all their prejudice into their job. Why, why would a police officer assume that you did something bad? Maybe because of my skin color. Child abuse. This is mental child abuse. This little girl is crying saying because so of So killing skin. Tamir Rice wasn't child abuse. Right. Not in, you know, not in his, uh, in his vantage point. Yeah, his his idea of child abuse is only that a white person should be allowed to vet, to harm a black child. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, I think that parents need to talk to their kids about racial dynamics in the world. And that's one of the reasons why they're taking it out of schools so that people can be blindsided and completely unprepared to deal with these kind of issues. Now, this is cringe and these conversations are really cringe. Oh, yeah. yeah. And some and some of the solutions that the parents are offering are very cringe. But i think that the necessity of having these kind of conversations takes place is it's important you know what i'm saying you like people are leaving this kind of stuff out and you can see it nowadays like a lot of people think that it's like the normal thing to do is to be off code and be a coon and that yeah. shouldn't be accepted behavior but yeah it, it's yeah person. like you were saying and like you were saying i do believe these kind of conversations are being had but the way they're displaying it here i don't think that's happening in real life no you can tell that this is very theatrical very performative. yeah yeah like like you can tell she was crying on cue 
Right. Right. Tears on she, the she, man. Like she, like she was, <laughs> like she was trying to force them tears out. <laughs> yeah, she had TOD tears on demand. <laughs> <laughs> that they would assume they wouldn't have probable cause. They wouldn't do an investigation. They wouldn't have a reason to interact with you. They just this little girl with this flowered shirt on. They some cops see her and assume that she's a criminal. What mother planet are y'all living on? This is this is brainwashing. Okay. My thing is this. Why wouldn't someone think that she is just because of the shirt she has on? She actually has the perfect cover. Right. Because a lot of people think that, oh, they're going for the typical stereotypical look of a person, of, of a black person in this in this case, um, of how they look or have, you know, a quote unquote in their eyes, an urban look. Right. That's the cover. I always say some of your biggest gangsters are the ones that carry briefcases and wear three piece suits. Oh, absolutely. Those are the biggest gangsters. You know once your law, your lawmakers, those are some of your biggest gangsters right there. Even the businessmen too. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh yeah, it's a lot of corruption there. Yeah, it, the people that will gentrify your communities, who are over that, those redevelopments as they call them, those are your gangsters right there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and think back in the day, like during like Al Capone and whatnot, oh, gangsters yeah. always wore suits. They always dressed nice. That the was the criminals. That was the, that was the cover. Yeah, big facts, super facts. I remember being put in handcuffs for something that had nothing to do with me. I was literally walking in the mall. Cops slammed me on the ground, busted my lip, chipped my tooth. That actually made me really mad. How about the time they pulled us over with me in the car and arrested me and left all of you guys sitting in the car and nobody knew how to drive on the side of the road because... I'm just going through the stories. So they pulled her over. They got babies in the car. They arrested her for no reason and left the kids in the car by themselves to drive home. I guess what she's saying, because she said they didn't know how to drive as if the cops let, let them drive home. I swear, God is my witness. Police agencies should be able to sue people for lying. In that case, you should be sued too. All well, the lies you done told. <laughs> right. Or, or, or you know, Maybe they she didn't get sued because she's not lying. Mm. Mm, good point. <laughs> you know, my thing is this. I want to know, did someone send him this video or did he just come across it and just decide, you know what? I'm going to react to it because what the title says, black parents explain how to deal with the police. And like you said, Robin, explain how this site works. Why, how could he not know that this was one of those sites that they exaggerate everything? <laughs> right. Like, this is the cut. Like, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it does, like, nothing goes down like how it goes down on the cut. Like, you know that. Like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he saw the title right. and he's, and he just had to say something. He just right. had to give his two cents. So <laughs> when he says that he didn't want to do it, no, he did want to do it. Otherwise, right. he wouldn't have did it. He knew right. that those views was going to start rolling on in. Just from the title alone. Oh, yeah. Now, I want to see him do one called White Parents Explain How to Deal with the Police. Because I'm sure there's probably one floating around here. I don't care if it's on the cut or Jubilee. Or if it's real. You know, non-dramatic and all the stuff like they're doing on here. Yeah. I want to see if he does one on that, but I bet you he won't. And right. the response probably won't be the same. Oh, no. No. But you know like what? It. They should because, after all... Isn't it a lot of PC people that say that they get hemmed up by the police more than any other group in this establishment? According to them? I said, well, if that's the case, then they need to put the camera in front of their face and tell about their experiences. Do a documentary or whatever. Ever notice that? I don't know. I don't want to say they haven't. But when is the last time you've seen a movie about police brutality and white people were the victims of it? You, you never see that. Even as a fictional narrative. It right. doesn't even have to be based on a true story. And the thing is, there are true stories out there that they could go off of and make oh, a movie yeah. about it. Whether yeah, it's absolutely. whether in a theatrical release or on Netflix or some other streaming platform, they could there's movies out there. I mean, stories out there, plenty of them that they can actually do that, but they choose not to do it because they keep us in the forefront yep. when it comes to this. Yep. Because they enjoy seeing black bodies on the ground. Facts. They should be able to sue them. This lady needs to show a police report where she got arrested for no reason. Now, let me just throw this real quick. It's more. It's a bunch more. Let me just throw this out to you real quick. 
Do you know how much paperwork <clears throat> has to be done if you arrest a woman and I guess you got to make up a reason and you leave the kids in the car by themselves somewhere? You know, even if a cop should do that, he ain't going to do it. It's too much paperwork. A cop ain't going to go through all of that work just to put grandma in jail for no reason. Is there one out there that's in a cornfield somewhere running around with a swastika on his neck? A report Maybe. just came out about the Antioch Police Department where the police officers admitted, you know what I'm saying? They they admitted to the fact that uh that um that police officers lie about what's being reported so that they don't have to do paperwork. Exactly. <clears throat> and I'm you sure know. there's other police departments out there that lie and do the same thing. That's why I always say that whenever we hear stories about them finding black people literally lynched, like literally hanging somewhere, they like to quickly say, oh, it was a suicide. I said that's too easy because they don't want to do the paperwork. They don't want to do the investigation. We know that no, like no, when if black people commit suicide, the last thing they're going to do is hang themselves. Right. That's a people think it's easy to just go and hang themselves. It's a, I'm sure it's a process to do that. It's not as simple as throwing, you know, something over a tree or wherever they're going to do it and it's strapping something around them and just letting their body just go limp. Right. Especially when I hear stories about them, like, you know, in trees and, you know, um, what not just like i don't know if you remember a couple years ago it was this lady this black woman i think she had two sons and then one day she had found her son in the backyard literally hanging and his pants were down by his ankles and they tried to say it was a suicide yeah no and that and that's one thing that's always indicative of some stuff that white people do because anytime they do like one of those weird crimes they're so weird they they always uh mess around with the pants yeah, and I keep thinking when I keep thinking about that, I think about, of course, you know, again, going back to the Black Massacre series that I'm doing and how they talk about how they describe, especially that one that I did that lasted for two hours. That was very graphically detailed about how it was when the guy got uh, hung after his conviction and how they came and literally took pictures of it and was literally taking pieces of his body and putting it in jars, you know, to take home. It is it's crazy for those of y'all who have not watched my Black Massacre series right by now. I highly implore you to do so. The playlist is on the page. Yeah. Maybe one. It, 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 these people are lying. OK. The bumper on the car was kind of hanging off. No. You know, we live in Piala. There's people that don't even have a bumper on their car. My rear brake light wasn't working and I got to my destination and they were working. I was about your age. Actually, they grabbed me. Why? I didn't know at the time. They just grabbed me. They, <laughs> they just, I'm going to go back. They just, because a bumper, fell, I didn't have a bumper. They arrested this woman because she didn't have a bump. Her bumper fell off. You know, you know, these people, ain't, and then this guy, they just threw me on the ground and I don't even know why. You don't, you, you okay. <laughs> Again, we're so cringe about this video, but the fact that the video itself is cringe is the fact that he does not realize how fake it actually is, but he's taking it as if it's the gospel truth. Because yeah. Because it's black people. And, and man, what's so funny? Like, man, I bet you one. I bet you some of his subscribers are so mad they're watching this video. They hit the table and the oh phone bounced God. up twice. I can't believe those people raised their kids like that. That's what makes this video so funny because he's <laughs> taking it as if what they're saying is true. Now I'm, you know, I'm gonna throw them. I'm, I'm gonna throw the, you know, a, a lifeline. Could what they're saying be true? Possibly. I don't want to go out on the limb and say that all of it is fake. However, you can tell that they're performing right now. It looks right. very scripted. Like, for instance, look at the daughter. I always pay attention to body language. When, when the father is talking to his daughter, she's not looking him in the eye. She's not right. giving him no eye contact. She's looking off to the side like someone's, you know, giving her signals and she's not paying attention. And when he <laughs> and when they put the camera back on her, she gives the driest response. She says, right. Why? Right. So you can tell that this is fake. It's like, again, I believe, I don't know about you, Rob, but I truly believe Fakem is reacting to this because it's of the title. Black parents explain how to deal with the police. Oh, yeah. If it said anything else, he would not have touched it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One of his one of his subscribers was probably like, hey, Brandon, look at this video right here. 
this this is the reason why those people have so many problems with those police. And Brandon Tatum was like, "Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll definitely get on this." He's like, you, you already know. Yeah. Threw me under the police car. I got taken threw him under the police car. When I was your age, they grabbed me and they threw me under the police car. <laughs> they threw him under. The... Okay. That time, that time they tased me because they said I wasn't complying. Ariel, are you okay? What's wrong, baby? Okay. I'm okay. I'm alive. All right. Every day I get to see you. I get to do this, right? All right, come on. Let's calm down. Finish this, right? You good? Hey, you make me cry. I got, I got to admit, I, I couldn't hold it. I had to pause it right quick. That was kind of like over the top. Yeah, that was that was this whole like the whole video is it over is. the top. It which, is, which is crazy. That I now here's my question that somebody should ask Officer Tatum. You know how Officer Tatum said he had the falling out with his parents? Mm -hmm. Did he have well, the falling so, out? Well, most so with his dad. I don't know about his mother. I heard about his dad. What was the fallout because his parents sat him down and had a conversation like this? I don't know. The, <laughs> listen, the world may never know. And that actually goes back to the YouTube short that I posted. What was it like the week before last? I can't remember the exact week when I was asking, where are their parents? I was asking, where are his parents? Where is Candace's parents? <laughs> yeah. CJ Pearson and a few others. I said, notice we never know who their parents are. We don't even know who their siblings are. Mm -mm, it, it's know. like, a, like I said, it's like y'all had to have been created in a lab or hatched or something. <laughs> yeah. Because like, I don't even know if y'all are human. Y'all are acting like straight up cyborgs. Right. Listen, let me just add this. I, I have never, let me not say never, never, never. One time I had to take a guy into custody who wasn't a suspect in the crime, right? He wasn't the suspect. It was a robbery in the area. It's two o'clock in the morning. This guy's walking down the street, two o'clock in the morning. Black guy, dreadlocks, white t-shirt, blue jeans. Exact description. Exact description. And so we got him at a gunpoint. He is the suspect. It's two o'clock in the morning. We got him at a gunpoint, told him to get on the ground. He did comply. We put him in cuffs. We verified his ID. It wasn't him, right? This guy, for some reason, I don't, he didn't even, he couldn't even tell us why he's walking down the street at two o'clock in the morning in the middle of the night. Okay, so, but no, it's no here, no there. He didn't get killed. He didn't get hurt. And none of that happens. I, I picked him up and I explained to him, this is what happened. Sorry that the mistaken identity, but this is what happened. That's one time in my career of, I, I probably arrested I don't, several hundred people. I've written thousands of case reports. One time that that happened, and it's a fluke accident. You're probably more likely to get struck by lightning than for you to be a mistaken identity. That, that, wait, what? <laughs> did he, did he, wait, I, I was wondering where can I stop this at? There you go. And, that you was, and, and, and it was right there at that moment <laughs> when he said, You have a better chance of being struck by lightning than having a bunch of mistaken identities. Are you serious? He's serious, bro. Like, I would like to look up the reports of how many people get struck by lightning per year and then look up how many mistaken identity cases there are per year. And I'm willing to bet the mistaken identity ones heavily outweigh the lightning strikes as far as someone getting struck by lightning. Because do you know how many black people get locked up for, quote unquote, mistaken identity? Look at how many black men have spent decades behind bars for, quote unquote, mistaken identity for a crime they ain't commit. Right. I remember it was a last week, a couple weeks ago. I heard about three in a week. Been He's, in a, and been in just like the like I think some was one was like since the 80s, one was the 90s, and I think another one was uh maybe the early 2000s. He's he what he's doing right there by saying that is he's using a common debate tactic called a false equivalency. So so what what would end up happening is if say for instance you're having this conversation face to face, he would mm -hmm. make a comparison like that, right? And then he what what would happen is somebody would say, no, it's more likely that, you know, somebody would get uh, a mistaken identity. And he would say it's more likely than uh, it's more likely than getting struck by lightning. Right. So then he would completely shift the conversation away from the nonsense that he just said and focus on getting struck by lightning, which the occurrence of lightning happening happens a lot less than people getting arrested. And he would focus on that as his as his argument instead of focusing on the fact that he's an idiot and focusing on the fact that people get arrested far more often. And because people get arrested more often, the chances of that happening to them 
the occurrence would be higher. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. what he's doing is he's changing it from chances, which would be based on, you know, like probability to occurrences, which is is what's important. And if you pay attention to how a lot of these conservatives, especially people like Officer Tatum and Ben Shapiro and all of these dudes, they manipulate statistics like it's nothing. And they and they do that on purpose. They're they're told to do that by the think tanks that pay them their money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, I actually, you know, I just realized that the video that he's reacting to is like five minutes and 40 seconds long. This is a 21 minute and 32 <laughs> second video. We are only about 10 minutes in. So I can only assume what we're going to be hearing for the other half of this video it's gonna because be i know he ain't gonna i know he ain't gonna stretch out too long this video is because it's short right but he might he probably will that precise the same street it was one street over that a, that a robbery occurred with a black guy dreadlocks white t-shirt blue jeans this dude had the exact same outfit on and the only reason we knew it wasn't him because somebody ended up spotting the exact person and we ended up iding him same outfit same guy same description that, that that's like Throwing a dart and hitting a bullseye with after doing a spin five times in a row, blindfolded, drinking a vodka. You know, it, it, it's it's rare that that'll ever happen. He said that with so much accuracy, Tatum. I wonder, have you ever done that before? Oh yeah, at the that sounds parties. like something he that sounds like something he did with his hillbilly hick friends. Yeah, I was that sounds that. like a hick. That sounds like a look, hick activity. Look, that sounds like something that would go down at a police party with with a Megan Hall on the table, naked, pouring the Ooh. vodka, and everybody smiles. <laughs> 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 and this guy's out here telling her these horror stories know that he lying he just in the mall slammed to the ground for nothing they tased me absolutely not. they said i was resisting bro tell your daughter the truth and say man i was cutting up I was cutting up and I was wrong, but this is what you should do. It's right. like how Tyree Nichols was cutting up, huh, Officer Tim? Ooh, good one. Yeah, because, you know, he assumed that mm -hmm. before we saw any video. This dude was talking like he had exclusive footage that nobody else had and that everyone had to flock to his channel to see it. Man, that's why I say his, his subscribers are as dumb as he is, because if you look at the video that he did, now, you probably won't. The comments will reflect a little bit differently now if you look at it now. But when he first uploaded the video talking about the whole Tyree Nichols situation before anybody saw any footage, any body cam footage or any imagery. He already went on a tirade talking about what he assumed was going to be in the video. He said that a lot. He said, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you this is going to be here. It's going to show this. It's going to show that. If you looked at the comment section before the video came out, which I believe was like the next day, you would swear that he had like the bootleg copy of this video before anyone else could see it. <laughs> right. And everyone was flocking to him saying, you know what? You're right. You're right. But then when you fast forward to like a day or two later, when he goes over the video itself, the comment section looks completely different. You mm -hmm. were wrong. You should have waited. I'm like, y'all were the same ones <laughs> yesterday saying, yeah, you right. Officer Tatum, you right. Right. That Tyree Nichols, he's, you know, he's a thug. He he was resisting. He wasn't compliant. He got what he deserved. Oh, well. BLM. You, that's right. what you saw. That's but then saw. fast forward to like two days later. Oh, you was wrong. You should have waited for all the facts. I said, I cannot. I cannot <laughs> with these people. All right. That's why I'm glad my subscriber base doesn't look like that. I'm thankful for the Me too. subscribers Me that I have, too. Man. I'm glad we pretty much have like organic, you know, followers, yeah. organic subscribers. Instead, making up a whole lie. I, I, now, I don't know if it's a lie. I almost would argue there's a lie. Let me play the rest of this. You have Brainwash. to be careful when you're out there in this world because this world's not going to always be honest or fair to you. I know, Sean, you got a little bit lighter than the rest of them, so it's a possibility you won't get... The reason why he keep pointing to that boy is because that's probably what his son looks like. He probably uh, sees this boy and he sees his son. Right. Now, I don't, I'm just guessing I've never seen his child before and, it, you know, it is what it is. But he got a little too excited to point to that kid. Notice he pointed, he, he, couldn't, he was pointing, you know, towards that kid and she started acknowledging how lighter he is compared to his brother. You know, his brother got a, you know, a Colin Kaepernick kind of look to him. Right, and you you and notice interestingly enough, and I didn't mean to cut you off. No, Rob, no, go ahead. Go ahead. We talking about Colin Kaepernick. I wouldn't be surprised if that's how he saw this kid. Yeah, yeah. You know is. how much you don't like him. Right. 
Yeah, like Colin Kaepernick, like Colin Kaepernick makes him so angry because uh, if his child grew up to be like Colin Kaepernick, that would like infuriate him. It would it would make him feel like that was a failed child. Yeah, he, or he being him being a failed parent. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, honestly, it's not because I mean, I think Colin Kaepernick is actually like a decent dude. I don't. I right. mean, He's a, he was a professional football player. I I think he's trying to do the right thing as far as social activism because he doesn't have to do any of that. You know what I'm right. saying? He doesn't. You know what I mean? So like I I don't really see Colin Kaepernick as like you know just some horrible guy out here. But that would be the epitome of a fatherly paternal failure if if Officer Tatum's son came out like that, which I think is oh that sad. would listen that would be no that would be music to my ears. I always tell people. That your wake up call doesn't always have to come to you. It can mm-hmm. come through others. So it could very well come through his son. Oh, yeah. Just like with Candace Owens and her kids, they could literally turn on her. And that would be, oh, uh, that would be like tens across the board. Yeah. Talk about being rebellious. Kind of reminds you of that. Uh, it was a triple P that I did last year. And I think you talked about it too, where you had that white mother go on Fox news. I think it was, and was yep. talking about how her mixed, her biracial child uh, was hanging with the bad crowd. I'm like, we know what that means, but continue. But right. really it's because he was starting to embrace his blackness. He was starting to hang out with more black kids and not with white ones, which lets me know she was trying to brainwash him at home. And now right. he's rebelling against her and at a very young age where kids are very impressionable by the stuff that they see. It's hap- it happened very early on. I think her child at the time was probably middle school age. So you're talking about like 11 to 13. So they're going th- through that stage of transitioning from childhood into teenage years, which is a very interesting time for a child's development is that part right there. Right. And I bet you, I, I just have a strong belief that his son might fall into that category. And if he does, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting tale to tell. <laughs> right. It's not like he just pulled him. Racist? Is that not racist? Is that not racist? She's telling her one kid that's a little darker skin. She turns to the lighter skin and say, "You, you, they're gonna treat you differently because you lighter skin." No, it's not racist. It's it's accurate. It's actually it's actually racist for people to do that. It's racist and colorist. You know what I'm saying? Like if we're gonna sit there and act like that's not the case, that darker skinned people don't get more aggression, that's that's a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. Just coming from from a dude that's that's light skinned. You know what I'm saying? Like that 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 actually happens. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, when it came to the child that she had told that to, he could pass. Oh yeah. Like yeah. he could literally pass a post to his brother who was a little bit more darker. He could not pass. No, nah, and I'm, when pass. I say and, when, and then when I say pass, I'm not even talking about just in the skin tone. Look at the. Let me go back a little bit. Yeah, the hair. Look at the hair. Te- let me go back. Look at the hair texture. Yeah, I mean, he don't even have not one curl. I mean, I don't. I mean, is that even is that child even related to them or you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's the grandmother. Like that's her grandson. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that, like that, I said, let me let me let me so so that's the brother and that they're both brothers. That's their grandmother. So they looks like they, they have the same the same parents. But you know, like them those genes that this just means that he pulled more from the black parent and he pulled more from the non black parent. Because for all right. we know, they they don't have the parent the other parent doesn't necessarily have to be white. It could or, be a it could be a Hispanic parent. Or they're, or they're, Latino. Or South of the as I like to call it. Or or there might be, you know, in today's family, there's a quote unquote parental matrix. Like we might have different baby daddies and different baby moms in the mix. So they the brothers mm. might only be like a quarter actually related because, you know, depending on who the parent is or what side, you know what I'm saying? One could have a different mom. One could have a different dad. You know what I'm saying? Like they might be step or half brothers, I should say. Yeah. But like I said, he could easily pass. Oh, for sure. He yeah. could not. No. Uh-uh. Like if like if it was to put if if I, if I didn't know that these two were brothers, I would assume that one, they weren't related because they don't look alike. Right. And two, I would automatically assume that, you know, he, he most likely could be mixed or he may just it, it could be a genetic thing, like sort of like Steph Curry, where you have two parents, but you, your child just ended up really like. Right. But this one, I would not assume like he could easily pass. And, and if they told me he had a black parent, it would actually shock me. Yeah. I mean, that little dude, it looks like a white kid or like a Hispanic kid, which is a white yeah. kid. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you, you just look like a, like a 
like a Latino kid. Yeah, yeah. let me skip ahead a little bit more. This is, she telling her one kid that's a little darker skin, she turns to the lighter skin and say, you, you, they gonna treat you differently because you lighter skin. Bro, I swear they God, are. I witness these. Like, <laughs> like they are, you know what I'm saying? Like that to me, that's just crazy when, when people sit there and, and act like, I mean, the whole fact of the nonsense behind the whole, the stupid term called good hair and all of that. I mean, mm -hmm. like everybody knows that that's, that what's being said there is true. You right. know what I mean? And like for him to act like he's all outraged and stuff like that. Fake outrage. Yeah. I mean, like my question is if he had a black son and his mixed child that he has now, is he going to lie to the mixed child? Is he going to lie to the black son that he has? Like, we're going to act like you guys aren't going to get treated different. Like, come on, stop it. Right. These parents are horrible, man. At least 99% of these parents on this thing. Come over. Okay. If you're driving, cop pulls you over. Police gets out the car, comes to the window. Ch -ch 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 -ch. What would you do? License and registration, please, ma'am. She got her. Why do you think I pulled you over? I don't know. Tell me. When a police officer says something, you don't, don't, you're black. You can't be looking at them saying, oh, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Well, I mean, that right there is giving them to them the license to pull you out of your car and physically harm you because it will be done. Don't get I actually like that she said that. And of course, you know, you got him over here acting completely flabbergasted. Look at him. Yeah, look at him. I, I like that she said that because. And he wouldn't get that through his thick skull. Mm -mm. Um, because how many times have we seen videos where white people, no matter what the gender or the age, get into these confrontations, these verbal confrontations with cops? I've like seen that. white people get into shootouts, land stores. You know what I'm saying? Then uh, there was that, that white lady that was in the back of the car and she took the gun off of the rack and was shooting out the window. Oh, I mean, yeah, this happens yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah, it was in some kind of a field, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember. I vaguely, I think it happened sometime last year. I think I talked about that. But yeah, so I gl I'm glad that she said that because we've seen and saw so many stories, whether you read things or saw videos where white people get into confrontations with the police and it goes beyond just being verbal. It gets physical. I mean, yeah. one of the craziest ones I heard was with the one that got into it with one of the uh, a cop, and literally somehow, some way, managed to steal the cruiser. They all like, right there. Like you hopped in the car and drove off in the cruiser and left the cop stranded right there on the side of the road. Yeah, horns, the sirens blaring, and everything. Bro, that kind of stuff happens like all the time. Yes. Yeah. So for him to sit there and act like it doesn't. That's very disingenuous, but he's a very disingenuous person, so right. that doesn't surprise me. Right. Go out of your car and physically harm you because it will be done. Don't get up. Kids, if you're watching this, if if a cop say, I highly doubt kids are watching this. I highly, and I bet you never, you don't make your channel set for kids because it's a setting for that. For those of y'all who right. don't know how YouTube work, it is a <laughs> setting where you can say, yes, your channel is for kids or no, it is not. And since I know he's making money off these videos, I know he's not because if you have your thing set for kids, they don't monetize your channel. Right. And I don't think you can, sometimes you, you can't put comments in. Right. It's age restricted. Yeah. A lot of those like, things are age restricted. Though. You can't put uh comments in it unless he's talking about you know having uh his subscribers who are parents watching this right but that in my honest opinion that would be child abuse yeah yeah no doubt <laughs> hey do you know why i pulled you over you say i don't know you tell me they don't give them a license to pull you out of the car and beat you up to be honest that actually they enough to make it's called car. excitable delirium actually they do there's a there's a pseudo psychological diagnosis that's called excitable delirium it's it's written on literally almost every single time on a police report when there's a uh when there's a police uh deletion i should say you know what i'm saying so this this unofficial pseudoscientific diagnosis of excitable delirium is always used to justify police violence or a police deletion so I think that, I've heard of that terminology before. It sounds very familiar, especially the part when you, I mean, you mentioned delirium. Yeah, that's that. It, they quoted that for George Floyd. They quoted that for Elijah McClain. And the thing is, is that it's not even an approved medical diagnosis. There's only one 
academic association of doctors that actually approves excitable delirium as a legitimate medical issue. And that's the uh, American Emergency Doctors Association, the American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, all of the other authoritative bodies say that it's 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 pseudoscience. It's false. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cop really mad. You know how many people we deal with that are just complete scumbags? It, it, I'm sure you would know, considering you are a scumbag yourself. Right. I was about to Takes say. Takes one to know yeah. one. We're watching one on this video. Right. <laughs> now, if you get smart, maybe you'll get a ticket when you probably would have got a warning. They ain't finna pull you out of the car and beat you up. Like, why are you telling a kid that when that's not even true? That lady can't explain the time where she did that and got beat up. It, it didn't happen. And then if you ask any one of these people, they'll go point to George Floyd and all this stuff. And it's like, George Floyd wasn't just driving down the street. And, and, and said, why you pulled me over? And they beat him up and killed him. Like, that's not what happened. Eric Garner, that's not what happened. You're right, they didn't. They uh, kneeled on his neck for nine minutes. Right. I mean, we all saw the video. The whole world did. What video were you watching? We right. literally saw this man lose his life from a knee to the neck for nine minutes. Right. <laughs> so thank you, Captain Obvious, for telling us that he didn't get beat up. We know he didn't get beat up. Right. He got worse, if you want to be honest. Imagine being in that position. And now Derek Chauvin is locked up. Right. And I'm sure he was so I'm sure he was so mad and distraught about man. Rob, it's too bad. We weren't doing collab videos during that time because man. I'm sure the response video to that of, of him responding to that would have been so hilarious. Oh, it would have been hilarious. He would have been mad. He he was <laughs> riding for Derek uh, Chauvin. He was riding for him, man. He wanted him to be found not guilty so bad. Yeah, he was taking a lot of L's, like, uh, you know, with Derek Chauvin getting convicted. Um, Kim Potter got convicted. Um, the McMichaels got convicted. I'm sure he was real mad about that one. Yeah, he was really The only mad. one he holding out hope for is the ones with Breonna Taylor. Yeah. And, you know... Yeah, anytime he can take an L when it comes to people deleting black people, it is wonderful to me. Yeah. What happened? Eric Garner got arrested 41 times before that time. And then that time he ended up dying, he was resisting arrest. There it is. I was wondering when he was going to bring that up. Or just from any scenario that he could pluck from. Because I didn't see him resist. And so this, and here's the thing. they When these cops, I call them terrorists and badges, when they do stuff like that, they put people in a position to have to maneuver so they cannot be uncomfortable. It's already in an uncomfortable position as it is. And right. then when they shift just a little bit, then they'll yell out, stop resisting. I see the trick bag. Right. And another thing that they do is they'll move, this, they'll position a person's like uh, arm or body to a point of where the body is naturally resisting and and then mm -hmm. they'll they'll pull that whole resistance bag out as well that's yeah. how you see people have those dislocation injuries and stuff like that anytime there's like a police that says that the person quote unquote was resisting there's always like a broken arm or a sprained arm or something like that and mm -hmm. that's because of the police doing that they do that on purpose and they do it all the time it's something they learn at the academy Right, upset, don't get sassy. Why did you pull me over? You don't have, I know how, just, just follow instructions and stay calm. Okay. Do you think just being a police officer and pulling you over, regardless of mom. if you feel you've done something or not, they should get your respect? She's a good mom. She's, <laughs> you know what I already said? Now, this is coming from a man who called Colin Kaepernick's girlfriend a dumb black girl. Right. Now, she's a good, she's a good mama because it lines up in a step with what he's his beliefs i'm telling you pookies and coons are not far removed from each other <laughs> they're just they're and literally the same and and yeah fake them is like intertwined mm -hmm. with both of those yeah like it's a it's in the dna strand somewhere yeah it is that's that's why they that like the same way uh coons have those emo emotional outbursts like it's fascinating or like oh how when he was God. flipping out about uh <laughs> oh my god that was too fun <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was hilarious that, listen my accurate. face my face hurt from laughing so much with that one i had tears coming into my like falling out of my eyes that was too funny that was hilarious man but that is what they do all the time and those are the main dudes that try to say like oh you know 
everybody's so emotional and this, that, and the other. And there, there is always a video of a you know conservative black man flipping out somewhere. You mm -hmm. can find it anywhere. You know. What I'm yeah. Saying? That's a tricky question. The answer is yes. yes. If you got to go to your wallet to get your ID, say, can I go reach in my back pocket to get my ID out? You could do what I do, and I show them my hands. So when they're walking up, they see I don't have anything in my hands. I'm Earl Sky Williams, and I have nothing that will harm, harm you or hurt you. And what's the next place you put your hands when you're driving or on the steering wheel? Put your hands out. If at all possible, turn on, your phone on. on. And call someone and put it on speaker. But whatever you're doing, I want you to say what you're doing before you do it. You don't write any statements. Well, you have to write a statement. You don't have to write anything. You're a minor. I'm responsible for you. No one can tell you anything else. If he tells you to be quiet, be quiet. Do everything that you can to get back to me. <laughs> I see it weighing on you, and I don't want it to weigh on you. I'm just worried about Donovan. I'm worried about him now. Who are you guys talking about? Her, 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 my nephew and her cousin. I don't want him to be shot. I don't want him to go to jail. So when the world changes and it's white people in these videos upset about how badly black police officers treated them, what time duration do you think we should keep acting like that until we let up? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you it's probably going to be a much shorter. It's probably going to be, a, you think it's going to be a much shorter time? No, nah, I think it's going to be longer. If it was up to me, it would be just like this bed bucking video, infinity and beyond. <laughs> 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 just put one big infinity symbol right there. Yeah, like, right. It's going to keep on going like the Energizer Bunny. Right. Um, you guys, if you could say anything. Is that not child abuse? This little girl is now emotionally distraught and projecting it onto her cousin. And, you know and, what? And, 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 I'm so tired of him saying, uh, is that child abuse? And again, this is just I'm not saying this because this is how I feel. But there are some people that do feel like this. Just simply having a mixed child could be looked at by some as child abuse. Expound on that. A lot of people don't feel that the, the the parental components are there to be able to raise a child. People think that the child might have identity issues. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. just bringing a child into the world under those circumstances could be looked at as child abuse. True. You know what I'm saying? But he he he's sitting here saying that these parents teaching their kids about the way that the world is for them kids to be able to survive is child abuse. Mm hmm. Yeah, again, it all goes back to the title. Black parents explain how to deal with the police. Right. If it was any other group, he would have left this alone. And if he hadn't, I would have been curious to see how he would have responded to it. Right. Because remember, his tone is always different when it comes to talking about us. Oh, yeah, always. Reality, this will never happen to these kids. You, you, He must be a fortune teller. You know, yeah. he must have been working, you know, with Miss Cleo back in the day. <laughs> Consulted <laughs> right. with that crystal ball that you plug in. He said that this will most likely never happen to these kids. How will you know? I'm very sure that uh, Tamir Rice was told that. Uh, Mike Brown was told that. Uh, uh, Trayvon Martin was probably told that. Um, Jordan Davis was probably told that. Um, what's that little girl? Ayana Stanley Jones was probably told that, and she wasn't, and she was sleep on her grandmother's couch. Yeah. Now telling she, telling your kid that they don't ever have to worry about danger that's child abuse right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, he he must be he must have some kind of uh, some powers, you know, uh, that can see into the future to determine this. He's not more powerful than us because it takes a lot of power to sit through as many videos. Of him yeah. babbling this nonsense as we have. <laughs> you know? Now, granted, we don't want that to happen, but to sit up there and say that it can't, that's like dealing in absolutes. Right. Because it could very well can. That's why I've always I've always told or asked one of my subscribers a while ago, what was when was the first time you had a wake up call? And a lot of people, the stories they told was when they were teenagers and even younger. Yeah. I know mine was like my wake up call was when 
I think it was it was in the early 2000s, so I was mm, maybe 12 or 13. Yeah, facts. Like, if the parents were honest, yeah, you should behave yourself in a certain way, right? But you being shot on by police, it's more likely you'll get struck by lightning. He loves to strike by lightning. Thing is that the kind of powers you want? You want yeah, li- right. you want lightning powers? Oh, he wants to be Thor. <laughs> 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 He's not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> they get shot by the police. More people die every year getting struck by lightning than shot unarmed by police. And in ninety percent of the cases where people shot unarmed, they doing something. They doing something. They yeah. fighting a the cop. They running from. Yeah, like, yeah, because like most times people are always doing something like I could just be standing there breathing. I'm doing something like this dude is a, he's a moron. <laughs> the cops, they're ramming the cop, with, running people over with their cars. You're not just nobody just sitting like this. Bah, 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 they shot. They just getting shot. Philando Castile was the only I say two two people. Philando Castile and there was another guy at a gas station was the only two times I've ever seen this happen ever on video. Philando Castile which the officer could argue justification because he was in his car. He said, I have a gun. And the cop said, well, get your ID. Philando Castile, instead of having his, his gun in a holster like a responsible person, he got it in his pocket. I had to pause it right quick. So what do you, I, do you remember, Rob, what he said about more people what per year get struck by lightning per year than what? Uh, first, it was mistaken identity. Now it's something yeah. else. Yeah, he had said something. I think no, was it get pulled over by the police or get shot? I need to run this back. Yeah, I think it's it was, a reason. It's a reason why I wanted to know that. Then shot unarmed by police. Okay, that's what it was. He said more people get struck by lightning every year than getting shot unarmed by the police. Well, that's why Google is your friend because that's what I was doing. That's why I had to run it back. Mm. And according to Google, it says on average. 28 people in the United States die each year from lightning strikes from deaths reported from 06 to 2021. Now you tell me, (laughs) are there more people who get shot unarmed by the police per year or do more people get struck by lightning? Because it says on average 28 people and we know it's way more than 28 people who go through police brutality. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I just had to look that up. I, I, like, that's what I was doing right here. That's why I had to run it back and see what he said. Yeah, that's good. They don't usually expect people to look that stuff up. So, right. Yeah. Sitting like this. Bah, 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 they shot. They just getting shot. Philando Castile was the only, I say two, two people. Philando Castile and there was another guy at a gas station was the only two times I've ever seen this happen ever on video. Philando Castile, which the officer could argue justification because he was in his car. He said, I have a gun. And the cop said, well, get your ID. Philando Castile, instead of having his, his gun in a holster like a responsible person, he got it in his pocket. So he goes like this to reach down for his ID in his glove box, and the gun comes out of his pocket. So the cops see him reaching. He said, don't reach for it, don't reach for it, don't reach for it. And Philando Castile is going straight for his pocket with the gun in it. But, you know, for the cop, it looks like he's going right for his pocket. It makes no sense for a person to have a gun in a pocket. You know, anyway, to me, that was. Of course, he has all the rules and stuff laid out, you know, when it comes to us. That's why I said we I know it's wishful thinking, but we know we ain't going to see nothing from him when he lambasts white people the same way he does black people. We ain't going to see it. Mm -mm. It was an unfortunate situation, justifiable from the officer's point of view. He was ruled justified in the court of law. The only other one that I saw that was unjustified was a guy was at a gas station. The cop told him to go back to the car, get his ID. And he went to grab the ID and the cop started shooting. Now, I, I have no, and I don't think it's just because he's black. I mean, honestly, you can prove that somehow. But that was a cop that shouldn't have been a cop. Because even if he was black, you're shooting at a at a gas pump. That makes no tactical sense whatsoever. To be the shooting cop at a that gas shot, pump uh, the, the cop that shot Tamir Rice shouldn't have been a cop either. He had been fired from multiple police stations and he was on disciplinary uh, uh, probation at, at the Cleveland Police Department. Yeah, but let him tell it, you know, he was justified in doing that. I mean, we heard that earlier in the the video. Right. Like, usually most police officers that get into those kind of situations actually have a prior record or they've been fired from another precinct. But notice how he left that out. Of course he did. He's been trained very well. 
<laughs> and I'm not talking Touch. as a, I'm not talking about a person who gets training as an upright standing citizen. I'm talking about those who have annual dog shows. Type yeah. Of training. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Open air. He could have shot all kind of people and the gas pumps like that, that officer is just a bad what I call a bad officer. Anyway, let's move on. Thank you, please. What would you say? Learn about people. Learn about their problems. Take some diversity training. I mean, it should be like in every, at this point, like a monthly requirement. You know, there's really nothing at this point that they could do that would make me feel any safer with them without them just point blank, clearing them all out and starting all over from scratch. So don't always assume that all of them are bad. Mm -hmm. but, uh, always, but, but all you see on the news and in newspapers and it keeps happening. It's just in a different way. It's like how people are like, you should forgive so-and-so, but they keep doing it to me. I forget, I forgave them, but they keep doing it to me. It's, it gets harder and harder to forgive them. And the mama just leave her hanging like that. Let me, let me just talk about <laughs> how, how did mama leave her hanging like that? Right. Like, the, like the green elements are up. That's the end of the video. <laughs> is he talking yeah, that's the end of the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the end of the, that's the end. Of, well, but now he probably about to give his little closing remarks or whatever. I can, I can only imagine what he about to say this for a minute because i think this is invaluable to finish the conversation you know black people are not any more at danger from police than anybody else go with the state yeah Pretty actually much. black people are at more danger than anybody else because the fbi just keeps coming out with all these reports about how these white supremacists are hired by the police we're absolutely at danger by the police moron <laughs> you know he got a he got to throw the he got to throw the cape on right quick. You know he got to throw the cover, give that little bit of layer of protection. Right, like because who apparently else is in whatever danger? he says is true. Right, like because he knows from experience. Right, the same FBI that comes out with those FBI crime statistics talking about thirteen percent of the population committing fifty five percent of the crime. You know what I'm saying? Is the same FBI that comes out with the reports about all of the white supremacists involved with the police, which means that black people are in danger. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that like, number is actually increased. That number is actually increased. You know, when they say thirteen percent, well, that number is still the same according to them. But that fifty has gone up. I've actually seen lately some of them have made it to sixty percent. Yeah, I mean, we listen, we almost at 100. So apparently we're going to be the only ones out here committing crime. We're the only ones that commit crimes. If you want to be factual, white people get shot twice as much as black people do. Then we just talk about that. Probably we, because there are seven times as many white people in the United States as there are black people. Probably. Yeah, and we, yeah, and we just and we just mentioned that, but they don't highlight. As a matter of fact, I think. We'll be some of the first people to actually talk about that if there is a situation where a white person gets shot by a cop unjustly, and we'll talk about it. One of the more recent ones I could think of, and you may have heard about it, was, I forgot what state, but I think it was somewhere in the Midwest at an apartment complex where the cops came and they killed this white guy unjustly, like right there in front of his girlfriend, like right there in the between the opening of the door in that in the hallway that leads downstairs like they just killed him like right there i did not hear him or any of them for that matter do one video about it bro white people be getting bodied by the police all the time and they don't do they, like they never talk about it it was did you see that one video where the dude in colorado got killed outside of his uh mom's van like they had grabbed him and yoked him out of the car. Yeah, I heard about I think you talked about that. Yeah, <laughs> like it, that, it, that happens every day. But the code of silence, they know what time it is. They purposely on their own sacrifice their own, like their family stay yeah. quiet about it. Like they do it. on. It's done on purpose because they and it's know the, what it it's is. The, it's the weirdest thing to me because it's like you know that this is happening to you in these high numbers, like you say, but you're not making any noise. But when it happens to black people and black people make noise, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to try to latch yourself to whatever black people got going on, or you're going to tell black people to not talk about it at all. It's right. the weirdest thing. Right. But it's you all don't about want to talk about what, but, you, but you don't want to talk about what's going on in your community. But we'll talk about it to an extent. Right. And of course, I'll throw my little jab out there and I'll say, you know, uh, what about white on white crime or, you know, why aren't you know, why isn't the white community making noise about this and whatnot? And I rarely 
would get any type of response from that. You're not going to get any response because they're because they can't give one. Right. Exactly. Unarmed white people get shot almost twice as much as black people do. You had never show me. Go name me the last white man that was shot unarmed. You would. We just gave we just you named a, a bunch. And if we you want to go back, you. Yeah, and if you want to back, okay. There's a guy named uh, Zachary Gifford from Colorado. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's that guy that got killed in the uh, hotel hallway. That's the uh, one, Rob. That was the one I was talking about. I thought it was the apartment, but you oh, know, you okay, said it was yeah. a whole. You said it was a hotel. I thought it was an apartment. Yeah, when they gunned him down, when he was on and his knees. girlfriend was, and his girlfriend was right there, yeah. or his wife, or whoever she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that, and that was not that long ago. That mm -hmm. was what last year was that last year, the year before last? I forget. Yeah, it was. It was fairly recent. Yeah, it was recent. Yeah, I bet you he couldn't name that person. I bet no. you if we went to his channel and if we just typed in Brandon Tatum, Zachary Gifford, you probably wouldn't even find a video about no, it. No, no. And if you did, I'm curious of what angle he took. Because, right. you know, he's always finding a way to be on the side of the police no matter what. Well, he can't take any angle. He it, it, See, and that's one of the reasons why you'll never hear a coon talk about police killings. They can't blast a white person that got killed like that because their, their subscriber base are also liars. Mm -hmm. So their subscribers are going to be like, you're talking about that good white person like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to be all this, you're anti-white and you're turning into a liberal and all this nonsense, right? But then at the same time, he can't critique the police either. You can't critique the suspect and you can't critique the police if you're a black coon. So you can't even talk about uh, white on white crime. That's one of the reasons why that's one thing that you will never see on any of these black conservative sites because they know what time it is. Uh, Greg Foreman, the black conservative mush mouth perspective, um, <laughs> <laughs> Officer Tatum, none of these people. None of them will ever talk about when white people get killed by the police because now that's a double negative for them. You can't critique the police and you can't critique the person that got killed. If you if you make a false uh, target on either one of those, you're going to get the subscriber backlash. And that's what they're more concerned about instead of putting out information yeah. is a and they subscriber backlash. In, and they bought themselves into a corner to the point where, like you said, they can't talk about it again mm -hmm. because of the backlash. They're afraid they're going to lose subscribers again. That's I call, at this point, I call it the amazing Lucas effect because, you know, when he started to change his shift in tone, he had lost. Like, I literally saw this man lose about 50,000 subscribers in a month. Like, literally mm -hmm. saw that. That literally, I was worried for his channel for a second there because he was almost at 450,000 subscribers. He was at like 449. And then all of a sudden, I literally saw like one day it was at 449. Then the next day it was at like 442. Then I saw it was like at 430 something. It got all the way under 380 something. He's getting back. It's starting to climb back up, but it's a slow climb back right. to where he was. And yeah. what and I think a lot of those conservatives, as I call them, saw that and they got shook that yeah. if they even wanted to change their tone, that would happen to them, too. So oh, that's will. why a lot of time. That's why I always say a lot of them, they could be serious in what they're saying or believing in their own hype. But a lot of them are grifting. Oh, all of them are. All of them. All of them are. And like my thing is, is I, here's my thing when it comes to Amazing Lucas. Like I actually saw the same thing happen with Fresh and Fit, but it was for a different reason. Yeah. I but I, yeah. I've watched Amazing Lucas all throughout when he was on that conservative tip heavy. And when he was, you know, now that he's starting to, you know, whatever it is he's doing now. But like, I don't, I I don't feel sorry for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad that he's recovered and like, I'm glad that his channel is doing better now. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that you can like, it's the same thing as the, what I've been saying about Sarah Garvey. Like you contributed to that. You used to call black people ignorance on your channel. Like the word ignorance that he uses, that used to be reserved for, for a dog whistle for talking about black people to make his little white friends laugh. Like when he was doing stuff like going to the straight uh, pride, uh, the straight pride parade mm -hmm. with that Milo dude that hanging out with Kanye West. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, oh, you know. Oh, Tinker bitch. Yeah, exactly. So like, <laughs> That's what I call him. You know, so like all that was funny back then, you know what I'm saying, until it got to the point to where you finally woke up and realized that you couldn't take it anyway. And so then you had to you had to deal with that whole process. You had to deal with that matrix process. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. Like if you was in on the right side of history, you would never have to deal with that. Right. You know what I'm saying. 
On the flip side, though, I'm glad that he did what he did because, like, I always treat him almost like he was an inside man. So he knows these people. Yeah, that's true. Like, so, like, on, like, if I was to have a conversation with him to ask him who, what Fakem is actually like outside of the internet or what Candace is like outside of the internet, he could give me the rundown on them because he's been in the room with these people. He's had conversations with them. So yeah. he knows what many of them are like, which is why a lot of them would never debate him or, you know, come on his show or anything because he he could pull some stuff that we don't know and use it against them. Right. I, I, th his video where he was bragging about Tariq Nasheed blocking him on Twitter is still up. You know, he's got like 4,000 videos up. That video is still up. All those old videos, like anybody that wants to know the real ama amazing Lucas should like scroll all the way down on his video page and then start from that video and watch him uh, like binge watch him all the way to the current day. But yeah. but I am glad that he changed his content, though. And I think that he does a really good job with how his content is now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he's yeah, doing you can tell he's thing. you can tell he's more comfortable with yeah. what he's he's doing now. You can tell that he's actually enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. No it doesn't doubt. sound it doesn't it doesn't sound forced. Right. But like see, what for, this dude is doing right here is forced. Right. But yes. see, for me, me personally, though, just this is just me. This is just no reflection on anybody else. This is just my particular observation and how I feel. If I see you make a sharp 180 like that under any circumstances, I'm still kind of looking at you sideways because mm -hmm. if somebody could just flip and change their rhetoric just like that. Yeah, it's it's to me that I I don't know how authentic anything is now at this point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's understandable. You never see it on the news. You can look up the stats for yourself. Twice as many, almost twice as many are shot on arm that are white. And black communities, inner city communities, perpetuating the most violence are patrolled astronomically more. Therefore, the interactions are more, but white people still get shot twice as much. If you put the two and two together, it's actually disproportionate at the amount of patrol versus shootings of white people. So they're disproportionately shot more than black people based on the patrol and activity in the communities. You know, he sounds like such a concerned person about the white people that get shot a lot by the police, you know, unjustly and everything like that. And that's all cool and all, but... When you look at his content, it doesn't reflect that. Mm, I mean, if white lives matter, he'd actually be talking about that stuff, right? The only time he brings that up is to combat what black people say. The, yeah. That's the only time he does it, which makes him look very, like I said before, very disingenuous. He does not care unless he can use it to compete or push back against black people. Yeah, which it's like, it's it's not even ahead. it's not even it can't even be used. In his simple mind, he thinks that he can use it, but like, you know, it's just he, he's an idiot. It's basically the only time that the only time that I've noticed when I do kind of like see through his page just to see what kind of reckless stuff he talk about. Trust me, I don't go in there <laughs> and look at it. Um, whenever he does talk about white people, it's always from the perspective of him going in on the white liberal. That's it. Yeah. If it's something from a white liberal, he will air out his grievances about that but what he just said in this moment right here you would think that he was if he was so concerned about white people being unjustly shot by the police so he could try to compare numbers like he's trying to do without pulling up one stat he would talk about that more i'm like if you put that out there with the audience you have i'm sure they would love they would eat that up but on the flip side he doesn't talk about it because then that would show that the same things that he's talking about with black people can be applied to them even more because it happens to them more. Right. So that's why he doesn't, he wants to touch it, but he knows that he can't us right. on the other hand, we can freely do that. Right. Exactly. And if you look at the statistical data and this, this ain't something I'm trying to brag. Like people get mad at me and be like, you just do with a white man. Look, I'm just telling the truth. So black people can be free from this brainwashing. If you look at it, over half all the murders committed in this country are perpetuated by black men. Like yourself. He said over, <laughs> did he say over half? I just want to make sure that my is. Yeah, he said over half. Over half. Remember, we was going back to that 1350 and how I said that number was going up. Mm -hmm. Based on this standards, of course. He said over half. Let me run that back. I just want to make sure that, that that's what he said. Black people can be free from this brainwashing. If you look at it, over half all the murders committed in this country are perpetuated by black men. Now, here's the he question. Said, look Wait. at it. What is it? 
but but most of the police violence doesn't happen because of murders it happens because of faulty vehicle equipment or a bad license plate most of the people that get pulled over and killed by the police aren't even murder suspects so that what does that have to do with it exactly you know what i'm saying and again and again he pulled and again he pulled this phantom stat out of thin air and just threw it out here and of course like i said his audience is going to eat it up rob i don't know if you've noticed this on youtube now it's been a feature they had now where they the have this the what you talking about the hearts no no not the hearts it's on the part where on when you're watching the video and the video has to get like a certain amount of views in order for this feature to kick in and i think it apply to anybody's video no matter how many subscribers they have but if you notice on the video bar it has a meter that's above it that shows you what part of the video was watched the most versus which wasn't was watched the least and it's like a it almost like a mountain or a hill oh no, I'm that's cur- that's you never regular- noticed that no, I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pay more attention. Well, you, yeah, you, what, well, yeah, like, look, like, I would say, go watch like a music video. Those tend to, you'll easily find it on there. Okay. And then it has a peak. The peak will tell you which part of the video is replayed the most. I'm curious which part was replayed the most on this video, mm-hmm. or any of his videos where he's talking crap about black people. I'm just curious. But. Yeah, for those of you out there listening, if y'all never knew that was a feature, yeah, that feature's been around for a a, a while now. Yeah, I'm gonna and check that out. It, yeah, like you can see which part of the video was watched the most, or which it'll say most replayed, and you'll see that part was replayed the most out of the entire video. But it also shows other parts of the video where it was being played. It starts off, it may start off low, and then it goes high, and then low, and then high, and then low. Yeah, I'm about to check that out. Over half, of, they say around half, because I've seen half, I've seen over half, and I've seen right under half with murder. Over half of all violent crimes are perpetuated by black men. Is it all violent crimes or is it murders? Which one is it? Right. Cause cause it's not, are, it's not both of them. Yeah, they, those are violent crimes and murders are two different things because, you know, murder, you know, someone, you know, dead, they're not coming back, but a violent crime, they could still very well be alive. Right. And then again, most of the police interactions isn't because those people are suspects of murders or violent crimes. It's because of somebody was driving left of center or somebody had a light out on the license plate. Um, you know, th- they were driving, you know, uh, going uh, over the center line in the road. Like none of these people that get like a large majority of the people that get killed as a result of police violence aren't resisting arrest because it was suspected that they committed murder. Mm-hmm. I know, t- I know the time is like get that through his through him is like you're literally talking to a brick wall that is lined with steel behind it. <laughs> right. So when you put those statistical numbers together, you, you can see why patrolling in, in, in these primarily black neighborhoods are prevalent. You can see why the incarceration rate is where it is in the black community. Well, my thing is this. He mentioned how there's uh so much uh police brutality you know you know amongst white people and whatnot if that's the case and what he's saying applies to black people could very well apply to them why aren't they being heavily policed why yeah they should actually have the insides of their homes police seeing that they commit 70 percent of familicides why isn't you can even take it to the schools why aren't there any or we ever hear about metal detectives being in white schools considering a lot of the mass shootings happen there yeah not to mention their parents are the majority of the gun owners, so it's more likely for them to sneak a gun out. Mm-hmm. Also, and that's one of the reasons why of those two things are two of the reasons why it's so hard to survive the suburbs. <laughs> yeah, oh, did you get that? Did you get that? Uh, that story I had sent you? Yeah, yeah, I got it up. I'm about to. Uh, I got as soon as I get some videos uh, edited, I'm about to. Either, I'm going to either live stream and talk about that video, or I'm going to make a video about it. But yeah, that's because I because de- I definitely want to hear your take on it because I uh, definitely have some I definitely have something to say about that. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, yeah. Don't even get me started. People got to stop lying. Just stop telling lies. You should be telling yourself that. As a matter of fact, the next time you release a, another set of merch, put that <laughs> on your shirt. I, right. I must not tell lies. Stop uh, telling lies. Uh, right. This guy literally thinks he's telling the truth, and his, dude, like I said, his audience eats it up. He built a career off of telling lies. You know, he actually could have been a very good colonizer. Yeah. 
that's the and that's the scary part. He could have been a damn good colonizer. Well, I mean, he probably he probably comes from a, a a long line of them. You know what I'm saying? Or a polite friction with the way that he lies. Yeah. And focus on situations where we can improve. These little kids ain't ain't even driving a car. There's no reason to be having a conversation, and they ain't even driving a car. And then when they drive a car, you should be factually honest about them. If they live in Atlanta, it's a black man that's gonna pull you over more than likely. What does that have to do with anything? They don't think that black men racially profile either. They get the same training that the white cops get. I mean, did we not just talk about Tyree Nichols a couple months ago? <laughs> right. And, and he was pulled over by like five, six, seven cops. And the, six of them was black. Right. The KRS one not make a song called Black Cop. Like, this is one thing that's a false equivalent that conservatives, especially black coons, and ex extreme racist white conservatives make they act as if somehow the behavior of black police officers somehow alleviates the behavior of white police officers and they act like black people just simply look past anything negative that black police officers do which is absolutely untrue because we call out the entire police force we look at mm -hmm. black police officers like they're white police officers they're the same to us yeah as a matter of fact i've said with my top five corrupt police departments are and a lot of them would be considered in to be in quote unquote black areas like yeah. for me i think my my, my five kind of interchanges but my top three is um the nypd the lapd and the chicago pd now of course yeah. with la that's more you know that's what your buddy uh, alex villain the waiver yeah right you know he's <laughs> so, not he's out he's out he's oh not i didn't know that no more yeah yeah he lost Cool, that's good yeah, because that meant, man, listen, that's a corrupt. I say they need that he was crap. one, man, he was one of the most corrupt sheriffs mm -hmm. and racist, blatantly yeah. racist. Like, yeah, you should hear this dude's like some of the just interviews that he did with like the uh, LA Times or just with like with local news stations, blatantly anti black, unapologetically anti black. Like, it's and that wild. and that LAPD was known for hiring Mexican gang members mm -hmm. to specifically go out and target black people. Yep, facts. You know, many of these police departments, the head, head of the police department is black. Dallas PD, Forward PD, I think have a Hispanic guy. Memphis PD is black. Philly, black. Chicago, black. I mean, then Chicago. <laughs> right. I was waiting to see if he was going to mention Chicago somewhere in this video. And right here we are almost at the end. And he mentioned, he said it. Rep uh, conservatives literally can't do anything without mentioning Chicago. Literally. I think I might have found the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's perfect. And you should put an eggplant going into his. You've replaced the microphone with an eggplant. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I got to remember the time stamp 20 minutes and 37 seconds. <laughs> every, almost every agency is black. Leadership, command staff. What are y'all even talking about? Let's focus on teaching our kids how to, and to be honest, they need to figure out how to be safe from other black people. But what? <laughs> see what i mean <laughs> he didn't even have to say that but he had to interject you know let, let's because teach our black, kids how to be safe especially you know from other black people i got a white neighbor one of these days i'm gonna I'm interview my neighbor and ask him what what did you do to train yourself to be safe for me despite the fact that like i don't do shit to your ass anyway like you know what i mean like <laughs> that's just crazy man like i guess said the self-hate just oozes off of this dude oh yeah yeah it's coming off of him he need to hop in the shower you know what i'm saying i don't think a shower is going to help he might need to hop into a river or a lake <laughs> or a volcano <laughs> <laughs> teach them the right way and don't add the fluff to it you can teach them how to cooperate and deal with police officers when they get pulled over but don't lie and say they're targeted because they black and they're gonna pull them out of the car and kill them you got to put your hands up look look six-year-old got her hands up talking about I'm, I'm so and so. I'm unarmed. That is the stupidest thing ever. But hey, look, look at them eyeballs bucking on that thumbnail. I was just screen. getting ready to say that, but look at the title: Former BLM activist debunks reparations in 60 seconds on Laura Ingram. Yeah, of I've... course. That, of course, that would make him excited for a multitude of reasons. One, former BLM activist. So the person's not attached to BLM no more, which we all know he doesn't like. But of course, we don't like it either, but for different reasons. 
a debunks reparation, something he's clearly against, even though he most likely would benefit. But that's fine, though. We get the checks cut. We come in to get your cut, too. We go, we keep in a list. We keep in a mental list of the people that do qualify, who is against it, and we coming for yours, too. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Like anybody, like if 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 reparations ever happens, what black people should do is is literally like economically block out all coons from black commerce. Like just don't help them out at all. Yeah, and then it the, said he's on on Laura Ingram, a woman who told LeBron James to shut up and dribble, which I'm sure you know just made him feel all giddy inside because he probably doesn't like LeBron James either. Because you know it's like an unwritten rule. That if you are going to be a black conservative, by default, one of the black people you're not supposed to like is LeBron James. Right. But y'all, we have made it to the end. I know, I know it was a it, it was a, another stressful one. Out <laughs> hour and a half. You guys brought this on yourself. You requested it and we gave yeah, it. Yeah, y'all you. requested it. You know, low key, but low key, we actually like when y'all be asking, you know, asking us to collab though, because these collabs be fun as hell. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, we to be, be kicking it. Yeah, but yeah, I'm always down here. to collab. It, it's the only thing that's that the only thing that's the issue sometimes is you know, like you said, like people outside lives and the time frames. And I collaborate with a lot of other yeah. YouTubers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's sometimes the time can be difficult, but man, I'm always down. I'm you know, I'm always especially for a good roast, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, you know, we down. listen when it comes to him, we always we know we gonna get definitely gonna give the viewers quite a show. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And he, he deserves it. Yeah, like, he lot, deserves it. Yeah, because a lot of people, and rightfully so, you know, our follow, our subscribers don't watch him. We don't watch him. But, you know, if the only time we do watch him is to react to the foolishness that he says. Right. You know what we should do one of these days, bro? We should react to his thumbnails. Like, we should we should play Ooh. a game and, like, like Ooh, get, that like, might be, that, that might would be, be a good. fun game. Like, we'll get all his thumbnails and make them, like, playing cards. And then, like, we'll react to the eyeball bucking on each thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that would actually that would be a that would actually be a good live stream. Yeah, yeah, that that would be like you know, like because you know, I don't know if you ever seen it, but have you seen like it's like this thing where you can rank. It's like a, a thing a lot of people do where they rank different things. You can rank like cereal, candy, or whatever. Oh, we okay. should do a thing where we rank his thumbnails, <laughs> like, and, and it has to be on like from on, from the level of Sambo to Super Coon. Yeah, like, yeah. It's no, there is no number tier or no letter <laughs> tier. It's from Sambo to Super Coon. Right. And I'm telling you, it's probably going to be a lot of them that's on that Super Coon tier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like that absolutely. one we just saw at the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> but hilarious. anyway, y'all, we about to get up out of here. I hope y'all enjoy us reacting to this foolishness yet again. I have a feeling that this might be a monthly thing because oh, yeah, we've been yeah. talking we've been doing a monthly roast on fake them at least since february it's, <laughs> it's 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 insane so i guess y'all can say that the next time we do a roast on him will most likely be in may yeah. i mean just find a video and you know we'll react to it and you know it's going to be kind of the same song and dance when it comes to him but it's just that we know it's going to be some foolishness uh up ahead like i said i think the main takeaway from this is the fact that he was reacting to a video on a website that's like Jubilee, where it's really cringe. <laughs> and it's, he actually right. took it really seriously. We right. didn't even take it seriously. Like it was a couple of times where we had to kind of interject and say, okay, yeah, you're doing a lot. You're doing right. a little too much right here to the point where I had to stop it because I almost laughed because of how extra it sounded. Right. Exactly. It didn't sound authentic. Exactly. But yeah, y'all, we about to get up out of here. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe and be one. Peace.